Hi, I'm Selma Benawan and welcome to the pre-release material. Here is task one, task two, and task three of the 0478 paper 2-2, the pre-release material that will be for the May-June 2021. So we are back with the trains pre-release. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to update the screen display. So the end of task two, and we're also going to solve task three, the end of the day, we're going to display the number of passengers that traveled on each train journey and the total money taken for each train journey. We're going to calculate and display the total number of passengers and the total amount of money taken for the day. And we're going to find and display the train journey with the most passengers that day. So again, we've seen task one before. Task one simply has three arrays to hold the data for the trains going up and three arrays to hold the data for the trains going down and a for loop which will display all the data stored in those arrays. Here is task two. The first line of task two is a flag called selling tickets. Okay, it's initialized to yes, so selling tickets equals yes. While selling tickets is equal to yes, and all the code of task two is inside this while loop. So all the code of task two is under these two lines of code, the selling tickets equals yes, while selling tickets equals yes. To revise from the last video, we have time up is an input. You know, the time up has to be either nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, 13 o'clock, or 15 o'clock. And then we locate the index that you know, that basically pertains to the time that they chose. Then we have time down is equal to what time will you come down? And it must be either 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock or 14 o'clock or 16 o'clock. And we have a for loop, which will search for the time that they input and find index down. Then we're going to ask the user to input the number of tickets. And we're going to validate that the number of tickets is available, okay? is available in the going up and going down train rides. Now here's some code that I didn't have in the last video. Trains up tickets of index up is equal to trains up tickets of index up minus number of tickets and trains down tickets of index down is equal to trains down tickets of index down minus num tickets. Those two lines of code are updating the table that has how many tickets remain. At the bottom we have a for loop and this for loop is simply a code just to show the word closed if all the tickets on that particular train are sold out. So now that we've finished updating our arrays and we've finished updating the screen so it has closed, we can show the user the trip cost is equal to the ticket cost minus the number of tickets minus the integer division of number of tickets divided by 10 because you get a free ticket for every 10 tickets. Now that we have the amount of money, the trip cost, we can also update the arrays. So we're going to update trains up money of index up is equal to trip cost and trains down money of index down is equal to trip cost. Remember the trip going up and trip going down is the same cost because it's $25 per ticket, whether it's going up or down. And we've already incorporated the discount for every 10 tickets. And this is the bottom, the end of task two, where we simply display the train's screen display. And we also, the last thing before we close off task two, we have to ask the user, are we gonna buy more tickets, yes or no? If they say yes, this entire while loop will repeat again. If the otherwise, if they don't say yes, then we will stop task two and we'll go to task three. So here's task three. Now at the top of task three, we have a for loop and the sole purpose of that for loop is to interchange again from the word closed, the string closed into the value zero because that value zero is significant. It tells us how many tickets were left on that train ride. I've made two new arrays, passengers up and passengers down. These arrays like tell us how many passengers went up on that particular train ride and how many passengers went down on that particular train ride. And the way we calculate that, we get it from the trains up tickets. Remember trains up tickets is displaying how many tickets are left. So let's say that there was 200 tickets left. That means 280 passengers took that train ride. So we simply do the arithmetic calculation, 480 minus the 200 that's left means that there were 280 passengers on that train ride. After that, we simply just total all the trains 
passengers. So we have a variable called total passengers and we just keep adding you know, the number of passengers of every train ride. So, and then we can display the total number of passengers. We also have total money taken equals 0, 0.0. We use a for loop to be able to keep adding all the trains up money and the trains down money to that variable total money taken and we display the total money taken. So here's the sample output if you put these three tasks together. Okay, it will show you how many passengers went on each train ride, the total passengers that day, and the total money collected. Okay, I've made um, two arrays, passengers up and passengers down. So in order to do the last part of task three, where you need to locate which train ride had the most number of passengers, you just have to run a simple search, linear search algorithm through those arrays and find the largest number. If you need a video about that, tell me in the comments. It will just be a few lines of code. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.